welcome back. Hopefully this is the final part. We've replaced the brake line on the inside of the car. We replaced the brake line on the outside of the car that came down to this back wheel. And well, as you can see, we've got another leak underneath there. Same spot. The only line remaining that goes to the rear wheel. So we're going to be running the new rear line from over here to the other side of the vehicle. And being that this particular line runs along the gas tank, we're just going to snake it through next to the gas tank and get it hooked up on this side. Now the very first thing we're going to do on this side is we're going to break off the old line. It goes over here and it runs back this way over the subframe and then it runs down along the side of the gas tank or down the side of the frame. But either way it goes in where it's not accessible. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it off here and we're going to run another line from th on this side over here up and over everything and get it hooked back up. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> well, at least that turn broke loose kind of easy. And of course it's going to break right here. Snap right off. And then that fitting on. Well, nice and easy. Yeah, let's see. Alright, so we got this emergency brake cable in the way this time. And yeah, probably no way to move it. Is a fastener there, but I don't know if I dare touch it. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I'd grab a zip tie or something to hold this out of the way. We'll be right back. That one disconnected. We're not going to do anything with it other than just shove it up and out of the way. I'll never see that brake line again. 
Let's not get caught on it. see that one again. Now let's get this fitting out and then determine where I'm going to run brake line. Up across the back side, maybe. Up over the subframe, probably. Start snaking line through. We got the line right here. We're gonna put the end on it. I'm gonna reuse an end just because my kind of car's not worth it. So, but it'll be fine. It's the threading is good. Still have the top of the nut to it. It's reusable. Now let's see. I've got brand new ones, but I'm not gonna use brand new ones for the whole objective here is just to get the thing functional. Started drizzling a little bit the other day and then I blew the second brake line and then I was not feeling well at all on the weekend so here we are now to try to get this finished up so I can let the guy have his car back all of this was really not expected although it technically should have been let's get our bendy doodads here you can see in the camera good we're gonna flare again alrighty now let's get the depth set on this Hopefully it works right this time. The problem is, is after you cut it, get these stupid little ends in there. Looks much better. All right. All right, now that end is done. in a few minutes. Now let's start having some fun wiggling stuff around and 
kind of get this line in and started. Get my padding all situated here. Now, up that way. line right there we don't that get the other side of it Turn all the wrench and see if that's actually threading. If it is actually threading, life is suddenly getting easy. It's threading straight. Yay! I should have known all of these brake lines were going to blow. Rusty brake lines are like glass. You wiggle them the littlest bit and they shatter. I only got one left in here that could be a possibility, and fortunately, it doesn't seem to be all that rusty. This little tight spot right here. Get in here, continue tightening this up. Let's lay here all nice and comfortable. Taking naps under cars since 1965. Starting to feel the tightening up. I think I'm going to have to do an ABS bleed on this thing because I've gotten so much air in it. So we're going to have to do a four wheel ABS bleed. my wrench back. Give me my wrench back. Oh, thank you. Now we're going to grab it once more with the vice grips. Just to make sure she's seriously tight. I don't want Anything leaking. All right, now let's get these lines bent a little bit more. Tuck it up out of the way. Now we'll go back to the other side of the car and yank. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we are going to put a bend in it right here just to. Keep this kind of neat. There we go. Up and out of the way. Alrighty, let's go to the other side. Uh, 
Now, the only drawback here is now I don't have a whole heck of a lot of room to work with. We're going to go down. This piece of crap out of here. There, that's good enough. Now we can come under this side. There we go. Down right here, loop, come back up right here. Got to make sure that we're not in a spot where if the vehicle bottoms out, the axle's going to hit it or the suspension or the brakes or the strutter. You got to make sure nothing's going to hit anything. Nothing's going to vibrate against anything excessively. Uh, let's see, what else can we think of to watch out for here? Uh, I don't know. It's just going to be a little difficult to try to get this flared right here, but not kill my knees. So we're going to cut this, gonna go down, bend back up, curve up more, a little distance, okay, so right about there. Hopefully this and the ABS bleed, I will, I will be done. I'll only be seeing this vehicle again for front brakes, because they're about due also. Uh, I'm not touching the exhaust. I don't do exhaust. I can't stand exhaust. Uh, that's Exhaust is something that's really meant for a lift and a torch. So I just assume I want the guys that professionals at that stuff take care of that. Now I can do exhaust, but it's not worth the aggravation or upsetting the entire neighborhood listening to me. When it comes to exhaust systems, I get quite vocal. Actually, almost anything with a car gets me quite vocal sometimes. The camera keeps me quiet. Keep me from yelling out things I shouldn't yell. Smashing windshields. Did that once on one car. That car went straight to the junkyard. And I really took my frustrations out on it first. Didn't leave much for anybody in the junkyard to get out of it, no, that's for sure. Took the battery, took the starter, took the alternator out. The rest of the car wasn't worth crap. 305 with the two barrel on it. <laughs> that didn't amount to much. I got about enough here for half a pickup truck. Alrighty. Flaring time. Definitely need a sharper, sharper cutter because this is getting to be a pain. It's squashing the line down too much. Good thing for me, it's soft metal. There we go. Now what I probably didn't show you guys very well the first time is you put the anvil, the pointed part, in the die. Make sure that's centered and staying in the middle while you're tightening it up. And once you've got it situated, go ahead and just crank down on it. That's still doable.
hopefully I didn't get a mutated fitting on here. Did I really do that again? Oh. It's just what happens when you get a camera involved. You, you, you forget things like putting the end on first. Wow. Okay, let's do this again. I read on one of the forums that uh, partially depressing the brake pedal got a constant steady drip will stop the drip I'd have to say I think that works I've got the brake pedal pushed halfway down I've got the battery disconnected so the brake lights don't kill the battery seems to be working though so there's another tip for you guys not my coming up with somebody else did but you know if your brakes are leaking all over the place rather than just letting your reservoir go empty on you Push your brake pedal down part way and pin it there. And that'll stop the flow of brake fluid from freely going through your system. There's another little tire deflator. All right, now let's get an end to go on here first. All right, now, once again, make sure your fitting is on the line before you start flaring it. Why I can't. Beautiful, beautiful. I like that there, that flare. <sighs> now, I go down right here. That across the frame. Tricky part's gonna be bending it this way. Oh wait a minute, I can twist it that way. Okay, so we'll just come here. I'm gonna start getting my little U-turn in here. in there all the way let's see if I can get this thing to start probably not Angle right, you'll know it because that thing will just start threading right up in there nice. Yes, there we go. So now, push things back and forth a little bit, get everything kind of in the middle. Make sure there's no kink because the kink will block off the flow. If you kink the line, you're going to have to start all over again. I'm just going to get underneath here. Bend 
this off the, off the frame just a little bit. All right, go ahead and tighten it up. So now it's suspended where it's not rubbing against anything here. Brake line is in. Let the brake bleeding begin. Functions, check sequence, sequence control mode, press brake pedal firmly, okay. End session. You want to exit? No. We want to run this one more time. Special function. The reason we're doing this is to purge any air out of the ABS unit, then we've got to go around and do a manual bleed again, come back, repeat this process just to double check, and then again one more quick manual bleed all the way around the vehicle and we're done. Press brake pedal firmly, press OK. Now let's go get the bleeding sequence done on the wheels. Again, make sure that the brake fluid is full. Tiny little hole in the top, larger hole in the bottom makes it easier to pour without it glugging. Glugging, chugging, and spilling all over the place. Pour it in nice and slowly. right up to the top again. Probably gravity bleeding well by now, but it's gravity bleeding a little slow, but it's bleeding. We need to push brake fluid from up there all the way through the system just to make sure there's no air. It's still trapped anywhere any air in there at all, it's probably going to make some noise when it goes through. Check the fluid level again. About half of the reservoir's worth. Yeah, we're all done with that. Now let's get. Oops, there goes brake fluid on the ground. Shame on me. Oh, it's nice clean brake fluid too. No bubbles. Let's get that snugged. Let's go do the other side. Oh, right off the bat we got liquid coming out. Oh, come on. Hose is just a little too small for what I'm doing with it. Now I'll go pump it a couple of times.
while you're doing the final brake bleeding procedure, you want to keep double checking, making sure that your master cylinder reservoir is full. The last thing you want to do is run that empty while you're bleeding your brace because then you're going to have to start all over again. So I think we're good with this. I can tighten this one down now. Now I'm going to put the back wheels on. Again, make sure your reservoir is full. And we're going to pump it about five or six times just to get it more through the system. Reservoir again. Just go ahead and tighten this one back up now. Satisfied, there is no air left in the system. So we'll go ahead and close it back up. battery just to do an outro so if you guys found this one interesting well, I wouldn't call it interesting but you start a brake line you never know what's gonna happen and in this case it was a chain reaction of glass breaking one right after the other but they're all done now this thing will not have a brake failure anytime in the rest of its life so you guys get down in the comment section let me know what you think about that front tire and the brake lines and then what we used to call a cob job on the brake lines. Let me know what you think. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. times in the same job I flared an end without putting the end on first. Well, I'm at the end of the battery and it's all done now. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Feel free to like, comment, 